Hello everyone. In the last lecture, you learned about how you can display the user's location on the map. And in this lecture, you're going to learn that how to display map annotations based on a JSON file. Well, the first thing we need is obviously a JSON file, which will contain some dummy locations. So I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new file. And you can go ahead and add an empty file. And we will call this locations.json. Okay. Now we need some dummy locations. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a few dummy locations. There we go. So what we want to do is to read this file and then add these two annotations. So I'm going to go ahead to the content view. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to read these files. And reading these files and decoding them into some sort of a structure. And that structure I'm going to create will be anything I want. So let's say that those are pizza location. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a pizza annotation. There we go. And it has to be identifiable and it has to be decodable. This means that we can go ahead and create a UUID conforming with the identifiable. And we need a couple of different things. Uh, the first thing we need is the latitude. So let's get the latitude, which will be double. And let's go ahead and also get the longitude, which is also double. Now, one thing to note about this locations.json file is that it does contain the latitude and the longitude, but it doesn't really contain the ID. And if we want to map it or decode it to the, to the PISA annotation, we also must provide an ID. Well, not to worry because we can always use coding keys to say that which key will map to what, and then we can ignore the ID. So I'm just going to say coding keys, which will be a coding key. And now in the decoding, it's going to only decode the latitude and the longitude and not the ID. So it's going to leave the ID alone. Okay. So this is great. We have a structure, which is pizza annotation, and it represents a particular pizza. Next thing that we want to do is we want to load these annotations and put it somewhere. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a state, which will be private var annotations. And we can go ahead and create pizza annotation and initialize it with an empty array. So now if we have the annotation or if we load the annotation, we can put this or put them into annotations array. The next function that we want to build is to load the actual pizza annotations. So I'm going to go ahead and create load locations. You can call your function anything you want, by the way. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get a path to this particular file, which is locations.json. So I'm going to go ahead and say let guard path equals to bundle dot main dot path. And we're going to pass in for a resource of a particular type. The resource in this case is called locations and the type obviously is JSON. So we're just going to pass in JSON. Otherwise, if you are not able to find that file, then we can simply go ahead and throw some sort of an error message saying uh, file locations dot JSON not found. Okay, once the file has been found, we can actually download the data. So we can go ahead and use data and the contents of a URL. So we're just going to pass in contents of URL. And in the URL, we can actually use file URL with path, passing in the path. Great. Now this can actually blow up. So we're just going to call this with try optional. We'll get the data. So let guard data equals to something else. Well, else really nothing we can do. So we're just going to return. And finally, we can go ahead and decode it. So we're just going to say JSON decoder dot decode. Oh, so make sure you're doing JSON decoder and not the encoder. So decode and we are, we are trying to decode will be into array 
of pizza annotation type. And we are decoding data. Now this again can blow up, so you can call it with a try force unwrap, but over here I'm calling it try optional. And this is going to give you annotations. So we can go ahead and say annotations, but obviously this one is the optional version. So we can go ahead and also say if let annotations equals to annotations. We can put this in the actual annotations. So annotations, I know it's kind of confusing now, but what we're doing is that we're simply unwrapping it and we're putting the unwrap value. Uh, let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Assigning value to itself. Okay, annotations. I think I even misspelled it. Annotations. And we are just assigning this value right here to annotations. And over here. So I misspelled it and I'm now making it uh, correct. There we go. So now we have load location. It's going to load all the annotations from the file. It's going to decode it, give it to annotation. This will be optional. We unwrapped it. And finally, the unwrapped version is then assigned to our state property, which is annotations. Now, since this is marked with state, this means that our view is going to get rendered again. The, the whole view is build again. Now make sure to call the load locations function. So I'm going to go over here and going to call load locations. Now right now when your map is built it's not really going to show you much because well there's nothing much going on to begin with. I mean it's just going to show you uh, the region and the show I mean the current location. So let's go ahead and use a different overload function, which can provide us a lot more information. So we do have the coordinate region. Uh, we also have annotation items. So I think this one overload is the one that we want. We will go ahead and pass in the region. Interaction modes, I'm just going to say all, so you can interact whichever way you like. Show user location is also true. User tracking mode, uh, I'm just going to pass in nil. The annotation items, so we can go ahead and pass the annotations over here, the annotations that we are, we saved, or we loaded. There we go, annotations. And now finally is the annotation content. Now, annotation content is special because annotation content is going to tell you what exactly the annotation is. And based on the annotation, you can do something about it. Maybe you can return a particular view. So over here in the annotation content, we will get the map annotation. We will return a map annotation. And in the map annotation, we have to return a coordinate with the anchor point. So let's go ahead and order the coordinate with the content. So the coordinate in this case, again, we're going to build up the coordinate. So we're going to say CL location 2D, and we are going to get the annotation. So annotation dot latitude. And the other thing would be, uh, I think we are also missing over here, coordinate 2D, latitude. There we go. And we will assign the annotation dot latitude. In this case, the annotation is the pizza annotation. And the longitude will be annotation dot longitude. And it has to return some sort of a content. So based on that, let's go ahead and see if we can return it. Based on that, we have to return some sort of content. All right. Now, I can go ahead and return a text control over here if I want to. Let's go ahead and build it first. But obviously, text control is not really going to look nice. There are some other things that you can return. You can return a pizza. Uh, you can even return a image control. So I can go ahead and say image. And I can say pizza image. And we can resize it if you want to. There are some built-in also available, which are like map point or something, and we can also use that. We can use frame, whatever frame that you want. I'm just going to say 50 and 50. Now, obviously, we don't really have the pizza image right now added, but not to worry. Let me go ahead and I will fetch the pizza image. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and fetch the pizza image from somewhere. 
just hold on for two seconds. There we go. And we can just uh, put it in. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and open up assets. And we should be able to put it in the assets. And obviously you can use any image that you want. All right. Let's go back and let's go ahead and build it. And I think everything should be set up by now. And now we can go ahead and probably try to run it to see if it works correctly. So let's go ahead and run it. And we are going to see that if we can get those two annotations being displayed. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it's not going to zoom into those particular coordinates that we just added. So we may have to zoom out and then see those annotations. All right, because I think it's going to be zooming in to our current location or it's going to just give you a display of our current location because that's what the location is being set. You can see that over here. Now, if I try to zoom out, let's see. Yeah, so if, if I try to zoom out, it, it kind of like sticks back, right? It doesn't allow me to zoom out. And the reason it's not allowing me to zoom out is we are firing constantly this set current location function, which simply just sets the region again and again. So if you go to our, our manager and if you go ahead and check out location manager, you will find out over here that once we get the location, we simply assign it. So what we can do for this particular case is we can say that once we do find the location, we can go ahead and say location manager dot stop updating location. This means that it's just going to stop. It's not going to update the location anymore. Now this does have other consequences that now we will not know your location if you're trying to move from one place to another place. But for our demo, it is perfectly fine. Okay. Keep in mind that these two locations that we have added are coordinates in Houston, Texas. But the location manager, since it's running on a simulator, will always think that I'm an Apple campus, which is in California. So when you run the app, you may not be able to see those pizza locations or annotations. So we may have to, or we have to zoom out. But don't worry, we will, I will show you that how you can zoom out and we can see those annotations. This is definitely not a very practical case, obviously, because usually if you are trying to find a pizza location, you're trying to find pizza location near your current location, but we are randomly adding those two hard-coded locations. Okay, let's go ahead and run it and see if our pizza locations are actually added or not. So right now it's pointing to the Apple campus and it should allow us to now zoom out. There we go. And obviously the things that we have added is in Houston, Texas. So we have to zoom out a little bit more to find out Houston. And there we go. You can see that we have added and it should be two. So we have to zoom in to see how many pizza locations are there. And there we go. You can actually see that we have added two pizza locations. Now this is using our custom image or a custom annotation view, if you want to say, which is simply an image, but this can be anything. This can also be a map pin. This can be anything that you want. And I'll show you map pins later on. But you can see this is a really a good way to create annotations and put annotations on the map. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and don't forget to download the code. Thank you. And please share the Patreon account with other developers so they can subscribe and support my work. Thank you so much.